What's up? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is I, Matthew, AKA Snacks XXV, here with another video for you. This is video number 49. I thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, the champ is super excited to be here with you today. Today we are talking about WrestleMania 32. We are two days after WrestleMania and things are still crazy in the WWE universe. I wanted to make a video to share with you my thoughts on WrestleMania. As many of you know, or have you, as you have come to know, I am a pretty big WWE fan. I've been watching it religiously for a little while now, so I definitely want to share my thoughts with the event with you guys today. It was a very good event in my opinion. Um, the crowd, I think, uh, was definitely feeling a few certain ways about a few of the matches, but overall, I really enjoyed the show. I was glad to sit there and watch it. It was entertaining almost throughout. Uh, there was a few low points, but I definitely feel like it was a very entertaining event, and I want to share my thoughts with you. I did have a little bit of a gathering at my house to watch WrestleMania, and I had everybody fill out one of these. It was basically a WrestleMania sheet that I made on my computer um, for those people to pick the winner before the match. I thought that was a little bit fun, um, so I had everybody do it, and I will tell you, I got four out of 11 of the matches correct. Four out of 11. I did not do so well on my predictions for who I thought was going to win these matches. There was a few surprises thrown my way, but I, I want to go over them with you. Uh, the first match that we've seen was uh, Callisto versus Ryback for the United States Championship. I'm not sure what they're doing with Callisto being the United States Champion since he is a part of the Lucha Dragons. And we have not even seen the Lucha Dragons compete as a tag team in such a long time. Since Sin Cara got injured, it seems like. Um, so I wasn't sure exactly what direction they were going going with this match. Um, it turned out that Callisto got the victory with the Selena Del Sol. It was pretty exciting, um, but it was pretty much what was to be expected. There was nothing too exciting or strange about this match. There wasn't that much build up to this match, so I wasn't really emotionally invested in the outcome of the match. Um, Ryback kept on calling Callisto a little guy, and Callisto kept proving him wrong that he was able to to handle Ryback in the match. So it wasn't a very interesting match, um, but Callisto got the victory there. He's still the United States champion. After that, we went on, and I believe the next match was the 10 Divas match. And 10 people in a ring is a little bit distracting. It's hard to follow exactly what's going on in the match. Who's the legal participant in the match? Who's the legal superstar? It was a little bit difficult to follow, but I think this match was primarily a send off for Brie Bella as she did announce her retirement. She's not going to be in WWE anymore. Um, so I think that was more of a send off for her with the Total Divas uh, versus Team Bad and Blonde. Total Divas getting that victory. Um, towards the end of the match, all the Divas got in the ring and were able to pull off all their finishers, which was a little bit exciting. Um, but I was glad to see the Total Divas get the uh, to get the win there and Brie get lifted up by Paige and uh, kind of get her last send off in the ring at WrestleMania. And then Nikki came out with her brace on and, and gave her sister a hug, which was kind of a cool moment for Brie. Um, after that match, we got into... What match was next? Oh, it was the Usos and the Dudley Boys. And um, that was an interesting match. Um, you know, the Usos turned on, uh, I'm sorry, the Dudley Boys turned on the Usos a couple weeks back. Um, and then they said they're not using tables anymore. They turned heel. They definitely weren't, you know, bringing out any tables anymore. But at WrestleMania, they decided, yo, let's go get the tables. They got the tables. And everybody wanted to see the Dudleys put the Usos through the tables. But it didn't happen. Um, the Usos pulled off some super kicks, put the Dudleys on the tables, won the match there. So that was a decent match. Um, then we got into the actual show. And I was excited. I've been really excited to watch WrestleMania this whole year. I thought WrestleMania 31 was incredible with Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns at the end. All that, that, all that conspired during that WrestleMania I thought was a great event. Um, so I definitely wanted to see WrestleMania 32 top that. And I feel like it did a pretty good job. There was no huge twist. There were some cool things. Um, I'll get into these matches might be out of order, but I'll get into what I thought. Um, the three on four handicap match with the New Day, which is one of my personal favorite groups uh, versus the League of Nation Nations, which I'm not too fond of. That was a decent match. There was some, there were some good parts in that match. Um, the League of Nations got the victory and I was surprised at first. I'm like, oh, no, the New Day lost the tag titles, but it was not a championship match. 
I didn't know that until way after. I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't know that this was not a championship match. Um, the New Day's entrance was almost better than the match. The New Day popped out of a big box of Bootio cereal uh, with Dragon Ball Z costumes on. It was awesome. It was a great entrance for the New Day. Um, so I was really excited to see that. And then after the match, we had the surprise of seeing uh, the, the League of Nations won the match and Barrett gets on the mic and he says, there's no team of three people that can beat us. And at that point, you knew somebody was about to come down and try. And we got three of the best that have ever done it. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid, and Mick Foley came down and beat up the League of Nations. Uh, we got Sacco from, from Mick Foley. We got some sweet chin music from Shawn Michaels. And uh, some Stone Cold Stunners were delivered by Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was a really fun moment. It was exciting. There was a lot of cheering going on in this house when Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Mick Foley came out. It was a really, really fun moment. Even... Uh, uh, Xavier Woods of the New Day got a Stone Cold Stunner after they tried to get Stone Cold to dance with him. It was a really fun moment. I really enjoyed that match. Um, then we had a singles match of AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho. Now, since AJ Styles has made his debut in the WWE at Royal Rumble, um, we've been seeing Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles. Chris Jericho, AJ Styles. Different varieties of matches combining those two as a tag team, um, fighting against each other. I'm ready to see it be over with. I'm so tired of it. Um, so this match, Chris Jericho got the win. It was a very exciting match. Might have been match of the night. It was super athletic. Chris Jericho's old, but he still pulled off some really cool stuff in that match. Um, there was a lot of drama in that match. You know, you never knew who was going to take the victory. And finally, at the end, Chris Jericho got that victory. So I hope they put it into that feud and AJ Styles can move on to other things, which I think is going to happen. I know has already happened since uh, you've probably seen Raw at this point. If you're following the WWE Universe, you know what happened on Raw. So um, Intercontinental Championship Ladder Match. Um, I will go on record and say Kevin Owens is one of the best heels in the company. Kevin Owens is awesome at doing what he does. His trash talking, his big mouth, making the crowd hate him. He does very well at that. But this ladder match featuring Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, The Miz, Sin Cara, Zack Ryder, Dolph Ziggler, and Stardust. This was the hardest match for me to pick who I thought was going to win. I wrote down Sami Zayn. Because I'm a big Sami Zayn fan, I like NXT a lot. Um, so I wanted to see Sami Zayn get the victory, and I almost was correct. Um, Sami Zayn was climbing up the, the ladder. Miz pushed him off. Miz had a clear opening to that belt. And then Zack Ryder, woo, 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 came from the back, knocked down Mike the Miz, and, uh, and he got that Intercontinental Championship. There were some really high-flying moments. Um, people flying all over the place. I'll, I'll, I'll throw some pictures up here of, of some of those moments, but there were some great moments in that ladder match. Some crazy stuff Sami Zayn did. Sin Cara, Dolph Ziggler, um, Stardust with his uh, his polka dot ladder. There was, some, there was some good moments in that match, but Zack Ryder getting that win was probably the biggest surprise. I did not expect that because um, he was a last entrant into this match after Neville had the injury that he got. Um, so Zack Ryder was put in this match after Neville's injury. Didn't really expect him to get the win, but I think I think it was a good twist. Nobody was expecting. Um, then there was the Triple Threat Divas match, and a lot of people are calling this match the show stealer of the night. And it was a great match. Becky Lynch suffered some serious injury in the face piece. Um, she got her eye busted. I thought it was just another eyelash that situation. But no, she really had some, some significant injuries. I think it was seven stitches that she had to get after that match. Um, but the Triple Threat Divas match was cool with Lita at the beginning of that match announcing. Well, no, it was actually in the pre-show. Lita announced that the winner of that match would get the Women's Championship. So no more Divas. No butterfly belt. We got a legit belt that looks very similar to the one I'm holding right here. That women's championship is very, very nice. I want to buy one so bad because it's such a nice belt. It's white and red. I'll post a picture of it so you guys can see it. Um, but that was a good match with Charlotte getting the win with a little help from her father, Ric Flair. Um, a little ironic that this new great women's championship had to get help from a man to win the championship it's a little silly but um none needless to say um charlotte's doing very well as a heel in the company so i think they're going to continue to push that for a little while until they decide who wants to take her crown which may be natty maybe sasha banks we'll just have to wait and see so that was that was definitely a good match um the no holds barred match with brock lesnar and dean ambrose i really wanted dean ambrose to get that win 
Um, I really wanted to see a little bit more no holds barred stuff too. Um, so this match was a little bit of a disappointment, I think. Um, still some high points, the kendo sticks, you know, Dean Ambrose was going crazy on Brock Lesnar with those kendo sticks. Um, but Brock Lesnar was just being Brock Lesnar and keeping Dean Ambrose down. So uh, Brock Lesnar did get the win there, but um, I really wanted to see something a little bit more vicious. Obviously, Dean Ambrose was not able to use the barbed wire baseball bat or the chainsaw um, in that match. Um, we knew that that was going to happen. We knew he wasn't going to actually be able to use those. Um, but there wasn't a lot of, of no holds barred type stuff going down, in my opinion. I thought there could have been a little bit more. Um, but needless to say, it was a decent match. A little disappointing. I wanted to see more. Um, the Heck in a Cell match, Undertaker versus Shane McMahon, might be my high point for the evening. I've been watching Shane McMahon since, uh, since back in the day, and he always did the stuff that was crazy, over the top, jumping off of insane things, insane heights, and uh, WrestleMania 32 was no exception. Shane McMahon definitely showed off that evening. Even though he did not get the win, The Undertaker pulled off that victory, I was still far more impressed with Shane McMahon than anybody else that evening. Um, Shane McMahon climbed up that cage, that 20, 30 foot cage, whatever it is, um, jumping off, trying to give uh, Undertaker that elbow with Undertaker moving out of the way at the last moment and Shane just falling through that, that announce table. That was scary. That was a concerning moment for me. I was like, I don't know if Shane's okay. Um, I really don't because when they zoomed in on his face, you saw his eyes just twitching. He was probably in a lot of pain, but it was a big, big moment for WrestleMania. I love the money coming down from the ceiling. It was a great, great uh, moment for Shane McMahon. Um, even though he did not win that match, he was able to control the next episode of Raw the following night as beat up as he was, big bruise on his face. Um, Shane McMahon definitely had my moment of the evening, I believe, with that, with that elbow drop. Then we get to the uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. 20 people in, in the ring um, trying to throw each other over the top rope. We had Big Show, Kane. Uh, we had Gold Dust, which um, I wasn't sure who to go for in this match. The Social Outcasts had been hyping themselves up for this match, so I thought they might get the win. And towards the end of the match, the Social Outcasts, all four of them were still in the ring. Um, but they got tossed out, and we also got to see Shaquille O'Neal Diamond Dallas Page come down to the ring um, and show themselves off a little bit too. It was cool to see Shaq. Really cool to see Diamond Dallas Page um, come into the ring. Um, that match was it was kind of like a go grab a snack match. Um, but Baron Corbin from NXT came in and he got the victory there. Um, and I think the next night on Raw, Baron Corbin made his Raw debut. So it was nice to see a lot of people from NXT uh, getting their call-ups and Baron Corbin being introduced to those who are not familiar with NXT um, on uh, the biggest stage possible at WrestleMania 32. The final match, WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. I've never heard more boos in my life. <laughs> Roman Reigns, as he usually does, same thing last year at WrestleMania 31. Um, he was getting booed the majority of the time against Triple H. Triple H's entrance was weird for me. Stephanie shouting, wearing that thing. I wasn't feeling it. Didn't like Triple H's entrance at all, but the match itself I think was very competitive. Um, Triple H, I think he's 45, 46 years old, still looked great in the match. Um, he definitely was was holding his own against Roman Reigns. I like Roman Reigns. I didn't boo him at all. I was excited to see him win. I didn't really like Triple H being the champion because he doesn't wrestle on a regular basis. Obviously, he has been now that he was the champion, but I wanted to see a current active roster wrestler have that championship. I was also hoping to see Seth Rollins make an appearance at some point. That didn't happen for me, but needless to say, it was a, honestly... Honestly, a great show. Roman Reigns got that victory. You could hear the boos from Texas to St. Louis where I live. The boos were so loud. They definitely didn't want to see Roman win, but uh, Roman definitely got that victory and I was happy to see it. Um, so that was WrestleMania 32. It was a great show. I'm going to try to make these videos a regular occurrence when there is a WWE pay-per-view event. Um, so there's payback, I believe, on May 1st. And I will be at Monday Night Raw the following night here in St. Louis. So it's going to be an exciting time. I'm going to be making more videos for you guys. I thank you so much for tuning in. 
If you guys want to see more of me, you can find me on Twitter and you can also find me on Twitch. I will put the links right above. If you like what you're seeing, hit it with a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button. Share the video with the homies. It's always much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.